People are angrily arguing about this, and I admit I don't understand it. It's what appears to be an extremely simple math problem. I love this problem, and I think there are two things about it that tend to throw people off. The first is we don't tend to think of a cow as the kind of thing that appreciates over time. That is obviously, if we're talking about buying and selling and making money or losing money, we're thinking in terms of investment. And most of us aren't farmers nowadays, and so we don't tend to think of cows as things that you would invest in or things which have a value that's going to appreciate over time. So right away, that little wrinkle throws us off, but honestly, that's not as big of a deal as where's the money coming from? That's the second thing in this problem that I think throws people off. Where am I getting the $800 in the first place to buy the cow? Where am I getting the $1,100 when I purchase the cow again later? And so that kind of tricks people into thinking we're losing money somehow. So let's fix both of those problems. First of all, we're going to say that we're beginning with some amount of money. So this is going to be our bank account and our bank account begins with $2,000. The second thing we're going to do is instead of buying a cow, let's buy shares in Cow Incorporated. So we're essentially buying a stock, just not a livestock. <laughs> So we're gonna buy shares in Cow Inc. and those shares can appreciate or not over time. Let's see what happens. We have $2,000 and then we're going to spend $800 to purchase one share in Cow Inc. Now that's a share that we think is worth $800. Again, maybe it goes up, maybe it goes down. One thing you'll notice if we're kind of keeping track of our total right now is that although our cash has gone down, we have this one share of Cow Inc. stock that's worth $800. So we haven't actually lost anything yet. We've just changed the form of our money. Now, good news, our share in Cow Inc. does in fact appreciate. It goes up in value to $1,000. So we're going to sell that one share, thinking maybe we're calling the top of the cow market or something. And that's gonna bring $1,000 back over to our cash side. And so our bank account now has $2,200 and we're back to no shares at all in Cow Inc. Now, unfortunately, we noticed we were wrong about calling the top of the market for shares in Cow Inc. because in fact they keep going up in value and we decide let's get back on that train. Now we have to spend $1,100 to purchase back our share of $1,100 worth of Cow Inc. and you can see why at this point people tend to think we've lost money. Our bank account is now at $1,100 and we have that one share of $1,100 worth of Cow Inc. But if you're just comparing this to where we had that one share before, it does look like we've lost $100. Before we had $1,200 and a share in Cow Inc. Now we have $1,100 and a share in Cow Inc. The key difference, of course, is the shares in Cow Inc. have gone up. So in fact, we are still $200 ahead of where we were before. $100 down in cash, $300 up in the value of our share of Cow Inc. Finally, Cow Inc. gets to $1,300 per share and we think, okay, for sure, that's the best it's gonna get. Let's sell that share in Cow Inc. Let's make $1,300 and that leaves us at $2,400 back with zero shares of Cow Inc. And so it's pretty clear at this point that yes, we are $400, can you see that? We are $400 ahead of where we were at the beginning of this whole Cow Incorporated Odyssey because we've made $400 with the buying and selling of our Cow Inc. shares. Now I could imagine somebody objecting, but we didn't start with $2,000. But you'll notice the starting value actually doesn't matter. If we had begun with $1,000, instead, we would have ended here with $1,400. If we had financed the purchase of our share of Cow Inc. with debt, we would still end up $400 ahead of that debt, whatever it is that we took out. So for sure, you should end up $400 ahead at the end of this process of buying and selling, you know, cows.